Hi, Holly Brown here from Clockworks Press. I'm an artist and printmaker based in Brooklyn, New York City. Today I'm coming to you with another Create in Place project from Speedball. Today we're going to be using repurposed denim and creating a lined zipper pouch. Since we are working on repurposed denim, you should try to find an old pair of jeans that you can cut up, maybe something that has some holes in it, but you're gonna need to have some larger pieces. We're gonna use the legs to make our flat pieces of denim that we will print on. You're going to need a few key supplies for this project. First of all, you'll need Speedball Speedy Carve, linoleum tools, Speedball fabric and block printing ink, two pieces of denim cut to size, two pieces of lining fabric cut to size, a 10 inch teeth zipper, scissors, a rubber brayer, a barren, sewing machine, and sewing supplies. Let's get started. So I have all my inks prepared. Uh, I will be using the Speedball fabric and block printing ink in both blue and black. I went ahead and mixed two custom colors. I have a lighter blue and then sort of a darker kind of Prussian blue and both are mixed completely using the two fabric and block printing inks. So I've already gone ahead and taken a test print on a scrap piece. So I'm ready to go on to my final fabric that's gonna become the zipper pouch. So I'm just gonna go and play. I wanna make this fabric, uh, it's not a pattern, it's one image. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that image and just play with it on the fabric. I'm going to start out with my lighter inks. And you always want to hear that sound. I always tell students that it sounds like a choo-choo train. There's so many different ways to describe that sound, but you want to have that ch, -ch sound of the ink. If you don't, you might have too much or too little. Now I'm not going gone ahead and done four with the light blue and now I'm ready to stamp on top some with the darker Prussian blue that looks has a little bit more black mixed in it so I'm gonna see what happens when I add one of those I think I'm just gonna add it maybe in one place I'm not really sure For the finish, I ended up adding two more on the sides. I'm very happy with the look. Okay, now that we have our dried printed fabric, our back fabric, and our lining fabric, we're gonna start off with this first side, putting the zipper on. So I'm going to go ahead and put my lining fabric face up. So if you have a patterned lining fabric, the pattern would be facing you. If it's plain, it should be the right side facing you. Then you're gonna line up your zipper edge with your raw edge of your lining fabric. And remember that length should be equal because we measured our pouch size based on the length of our zipper. Don't worry if you have a large uh, pull like I do, we're gonna work around that in the beginning and we'll go back to it. Next, you're gonna take your fabric that's going to be on the back of the pouch. You are going to turn this over so the wrong side is facing up and the right side is facing your lining fabric and you're going to continue making your sandwich. Use this side. So I'm lining up the raw edge of my denim with my zipper. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish clipping this and then we'll go right over to the sewing machine. We're gonna stitch on the first side of our zipper. Okay, so we're at the sewing machine 
And I wanted to let you know, I have a zipper foot uh, set up on my machine. Every machine usually comes with one, but you wanna make sure you have a zipper foot. And you wanna make sure you're also, if you are using the denim, that you are using a heavier needle. There's needles out there that are even specified for denim. I also have the stitch length right now set at two and a half, and I'm using a running stitch. Remember we talked about, we have that little uh, pull at the beginning. So we're actually gonna work around that pull. We're not even gonna go near it. have our lining fabric again. This is the other side of the lining. We're going to do exactly the same process. Face up with the lining fabric. So if you have a patterned lining fabric, make sure the pattern is facing you. Then you're going to take your first sandwich that you already made because that has your zipper on it. And you're going to line up the zipper with the raw edge of the lining. Mindful of your pull. Lining up all your edges. Then you're going to take your front fabric. Now this is probably the one with the print. In my case, it is, it's the one with all the printing. I'm gonna turn it face down, just like I did my dark denim or whatever other denim you had. So again, my zipper is back to where it should be, on the left side of the pouch. That's where I want my zipper to open and close from the left. So that's why I had to put the front of my pouch on last. Now you can see just like before, I still have to deal with my pull. So we're gonna handle it the exact same way. Okay, my zipper looks like it went together beautifully. Oh wow, I'm really happy with that zipper. And believe me, I've had my fair share of poor, so poorly sewn zippers. So I'm really happy with the way this looks. We're gonna head over to the iron next. I'll see you there. Okay, so now we're at our iron and we're ready to press out our seams away from the zipper. This is a really important step. And if you have the printed side, definitely wanna put something to protect your print. If you want, careful of your iron, if you wanna put a label on the inside, this is the point where you would actually need to stop and do that. Okay, so what I've done now is I've gone ahead and I've lined my presser foot, edge of my presser foot up with the edge of my fabric. Again, this is the reason you want to firmly iron this so that it's nice and flat. But what the stitch is gonna do, this top stitch, which we set at a length of four, it's gonna give us a nice line along here. Now, you could pick a really bright, contrasting, fun thread if you wanted to have a bright top stitch on there. Now that we have our zipper open, we're going to actually put our 
two cover pieces or outer layers together and our two lining pieces together. So we're gonna go ahead and sandwich those and then lay it flat on your table. And you're gonna notice you do have the bulk of the zipper here in the center and your zipper is going to want to push towards the lining and that's actually the correct way. And that works out because of the top stitching that we did. So you're gonna go ahead and clip at the edge of the zipper and then spin it around. Clip on the other edge. Again, making sure that your zipper is pointing inward towards the lining. Now, I wanna use something different to tell myself that I have to stop at two points on the lining because I need to leave a space for my hand when I'm gonna be turning this inside out. So I'm actually gonna use pins instead of clips here. And that's gonna help me remember that I have to stop here and here to leave that space to turn it inside out. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip around the outside and then we'll be ready to go back to the machine. So I'm back at the sewing machine and I'm all set up. I'm going to start at the first pin. I'm gonna go all the way around and stop at the last pin. Then we're gonna turn it inside out and that's how we're gonna get our zipper pouch. I'm allowing about a half inch seam allowance because I wanna make sure that I don't touch my zipper when I get over to my zipper. And I left my zipper foot on, but I'm at a two and a half inch length. So I'm gonna go forward. Before I go ahead and reveal the pouch, I'm gonna go ahead and trim up all of these extra little threads that are hanging and turn my zipper pouch inside out. This is so magical. It's almost as good as a reveal peel in printmaking. It's very close. So remember, this is why we left the hole in the opening. So I'm gonna push out my corners, just using my pointer finger. And that's also the reason that we trim the corners so that you can point them out much more easily. If you don't trim them, you will notice a difference. And I'm gonna do the same thing to my lining fabric. And I'm really happy with the way my design came out. It's straight, my stitching is straight, my zipper is straight. But again, this takes practice. So make a few, make a bunch. Um, I love to make them for friends and family. And the, this is the perfect size to go in any bag. You could put your speedball supplies in here, whatever you wanna put in. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna iron this again, and then we're gonna go ahead and seal up this little seam here. And as you can see, it's already almost turning naturally. So I don't really have to do much pressing at all. So I'm just gonna, Seal that up and then we'll stitch it at the machine and we'll be finished. The machine, one last time. We're just going to close up our little seam here. I've put a clip at the start and a clip at the finish. So we can go ahead and do that. Congratulations, you've just finished your lined printed zipper pouch. I'm gonna show a second style here. For this style, I actually cut out a print and sewed it on top in an applique. I also added a tassel, and I wanted to show you what it looked like if you used contrast top stitching. I hope you really enjoyed today's Speedball Create in Place lined zipper pouch, and I can't wait to see which style you decided to do. Um, please reach out to me. I am on Instagram and Facebook. The handle is at Clockworks Press. And again, I wanna thank Speedball for letting me be part of this amazing Create and Place campaign. I feel so proud to be part of this incredible network of artists. Thanks everybody and have a great time printing.